Phone charging slowly. This is the fastest phone charger on the market. There's a 90% chance your phone is already affected with this. There's a new groundbreaking discovery that's reversing planned obsolescence. And smartphone companies are trying their hardest to make it illegal. In the hey guys, we'll get started up here in a minute. Uh, one o'clock actually, we'll make sure some folk get in here. We got a lot of important stuff to talk about today. This is by uh, CBDC thing is taking the world by storm. The IMF and the Bank for International Settlements are moving full speed ahead, and it's going to really impact your financial freedom and freedom as a whole. So we're going to get started here in a minute, guys. All right, guys, we're going to get started here in just a minute. Hang with me. Just um, got a lot of very important stuff to talk about today. Grab a beverage. We're going to be looking at um, some of the stuff coming out of the Bank uh, for International Settlements. Remember, the Bank for International Settlements is the central bank of central banks. Also, the International Monetary Fund. These guys are moving full speed ahead on this uh, CBDC thing. It's bad news for those of us who want to maintain our path along the road to financial independence. All right, we're going to uh, we're getting closer to uh, one o'clock. We give about five minutes, and then we're going to go ahead and get started, guys. We're going to start it off with something light, something you know that I want you to weigh in on, and then we're going to get real serious, guys, uh, because you not only do you need to know what we're going to be talking about with regard to what's happening on the CBDC front, but also you need to be ambassadors and educate your friends and family. 72% of people out there in the uh, country, let me get my stat right. I'm going to, uh, I want to quote it right before I put it out there. I know the data is, but hold on for me for a second. Interesting times, I tell you. I never thought back when I was a young buck in the uh, 80s. Cold War era. Uh, for the life of me, I never thought I'd be uh, living in a country that is going the way that ours is going. Okay, let's see, let's see. Okay. All right, so here's the stat. They did a survey to find out what people thought about the um, CBDC. 72% of Americans have never heard of it. OK. Uh, and that's by design. And so we've got to reverse that trend. We've got to educate folk because that is one of the things that the power elite are counting on is ignorance. All right. That we don't know what's going on. And contrary to what a lot of people might say, oh, well, they're trying to distract us with this or the submarine or that. Listen, uh, we are perfectly capable of thinking multidimensionally. So just because there's one prominent news story doesn't mean we can't track others. We, you know, we, we can do that. Our friends and family are perfectly capable of doing that. We need to educate them. In fact, invite them to this live stream. Share our videos with them. All right. All right. I don't have to tell you. As you come in, just hit like for me, please. Do me that solid. Go ahead, hit that like thumbs up uh, so that we can grow this channel. 
Uh, the channel uh, definitely is not <laughs> the most popular in the eyes of large corporations like Google, <laughs> especially after we did that BlackRock do <laughs> documentary. Things seem to go in a different direction after that. Liberty Garden, hey, how you doing? First like, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, we'll get started here in just a second. I think you guys are going to be pretty interested in what we're going to be talking about today. Because um, that's 72% of respondents who have never even heard of a CBDC, the IMF, the uh, Bank for International Settlements, our own Fed, they're counting on numbers like that. They don't want people to know about this. Works against the agenda. And there is an agenda. All right. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, it's not conspiracy if they write it down and tell you exactly what they're going to do. Right. OK. All right. Let's start off with the uh, lighthearted stuff and then we'll uh, get into the more serious stuff. Just give a couple more minutes for folk to get in. Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk are planning on a billionaire battle royal. Okay, probably one of these things where they're going to donate proceeds to charity. But I want to see this because we've got basically in Mark Zuckerberg, we have an android versus the alien Elon Musk. So who's going to win this? Okay, now look, they both have some skill at uh, Mortal Kombat. Zuckerberg is uh, really into judo. He Apparently, he won some uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu competition, okay? But I, I don't know, guys. I think it was one of those wins like Putin gets, you know, when he beats you. It's like, I can't, can't let this guy lose, you know. Might be bad for me. And um, Musk took some sort of martial arts when he was young. So we'll see what happens with that. We'll track it, but... Uh, Drop me a line in the uh, comments. Who do you think will win that? I've got my money on Elon. So I don't know. All right, guys. Look, like I said, it is not paranoia if they are really out to get you. Um, and the International Monetary Fund and the Bank for International Settlements, as well as some of the other, most of the other central banks, they are out to establish this uh, central bank digital currency. But if you were thinking each country is going to have their own, well, they're driving completely different. They want a unified global central bank digital currency that is completely programmable. And we'll talk about what that means and trackable and trackable needs no further explanation. Right. All right. So. Um, that's what we're facing here. We're facing the end of individual sovereign here in the United States and in the Western world. Can the Canadians, the New Zealanders, and the Australians—they're really feeling it. Uh, let's be let's be real fair about it, guys. Um, the only thing that is keeping us from being in that situation right now, here in America, is the Second Amendment. Okay. Um, but they're working on doing away with that. And I think uh, in a generation, they'll get that. These new young folk coming up are not as strident in protecting their constitutional rights as, uh, you know, my generation and generations prior to that might have been. Liberty Garden says, Zuck is younger and he looks to be in better shape. <laughs> but I'm cheering for Musk. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Zuckerberg is uh, slim and trim and uh, Elon, but Elon's an alien. so. On his planet, you know, his his girth might might work to his advantage. Uh, wherever he comes from, I think is a lower gravity. So uh, I mean, a high gravity. So down here, you know, things are pretty simple. All right. So let's uh, take a look at the international. Let, and again, I want to frame this whole live stream thusly. It is not. Cons this is this stuff is not conspiracy. We've got the people that are directly involved in implementing a global central bank digital currency, they are actively out there speaking on that. And they're also speaking on destroying crypto. Okay, that's the other thing. Um, they want to destroy crypto. 
Uh, they made no bones about that. In fact, Elizabeth Warren, I don't know if she's still running for president. I think they want to just make that, you know, Biden gets a coronation, basically. So I don't know if she's still doing that. But uh, a few months ago, she did come out and say that uh, she was declaring war on crypto. Did you listen to a lot of what the Congress has to say about it? Very anti-crypto. Now, that's one of the reasons I don't invest in crypto, because you got a, you got every regulatory and legislative body in America coming after crypto full bore. And last time I checked, Bitcoin doesn't have a military or an intelligence apparatus. All right. And I know some of the folks out there are real high on crypto and I get it. I like the concept, but the implementation and practicality of it with a hostile U.S. government is dubious to me. OK, so here's a here's a view also. Tyrone, at this point, you have no choice but to stash money in Bitcoin. It may not be possible once it's in place. I agree. Now, I have said on the channel many times before, I'm no crypto expert. OK, so I don't uh, claim to be, you know, able to tell you how to move with that. But. I am watching the legislation you've got uh, and the, the legal action as well. You've got um, Coinbase has been sued, Binance also, a lot of legal action coming their way. And I know they're exchanges. They're not the actual, you know, cryptos themselves, but it just seems like a full court press. So look, um, this young lady here on the screen, she is the International Monetary Fund's director and she calls for intensifying efforts to decide on CBDC. And when she says decide, or when they say decide, talk to what extent they're going to implement this. Uh, they want to do it globally. So they work out the sovereign currencies. That's the ultimate goal. And you will hear her allude to that in a moment. Uh, but it's going to take time. I believe, and some of the folks on the channel believes, uh, believe that uh, we've got about 10 years, okay? 10 years go by like that, all right? We bought this house and got married 20 years ago, and I swear to you, that went by in the blink of an eye. The managing director of, international, of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva, urged this week in Morocco for increased international efforts in reaching a decision on the implementation of central bank digital currency. This digital currency is being pressed, uh, presented rather, as a viable alternative to the potential risk associated with private cryptocurrency projects. And see, this is another angle that uh, we're seeing come against crypto is the international governmental and non-governmental associations, right? Uh, let's actually hear from Miss, I uh, forget her last name, we hear from her. Let's see if you can hear this. I don't think you can. Why is that not? Okay, here we go. A lot of feedback there, guys. I apologize. I'll go ahead and link to that. But we're a growing organization here, okay? Uh, I'll read to you what she says. During her participation in a roundtable on the CBDC uh, in Rabat, Ms. Georgieva emphasized the significant importance that the International Monetary Fund places on this issue. She highlighted that currently around 100 14 central banks worldwide are in the experimentation phase. So when she says 114 central banks, that's 114 nations, right, are in the experimental uh, phase with regard to establishing a central bank digital currency. Tens of countries, including China, are in the final stages of implementation. However, she acknowledged that some central banks have halted discussions on the matter due to its complexity. And notice, she didn't say due to the people saying, hell no, we don't want this, due to its complexity. 
Georgieva stressed the need for swift action, stating, quote, a digital revolution is underway, greatly impacting the role of currency. Failure to act promptly will result in missed opportunities and pose risk to our future. That's the way government always frames stuff. You're all going to die unless you do what we want to. Remember back during the in the wake of the 2001 uh, World Trade Center disaster and attack. Remember that. Oh, unless we establish this Patriot Act, guys, you this might happen again. Uh, we we got to do it. You know, yeah, it's going to take away some of your freedom, but you're going to be safe. OK, so that's what governments always do. Oh, and they're doing this one also. You're going to love it. It's going to benefit you. Yeah, sure. You're going to le lose some of your financial independence and we're going to track you everywhere you go. And oh, yeah, by the way, you know what they do to you on Facebook when you say the wrong thing? and they put you in a Facebook jail, well, we're going to have the ability to do pretty much the same thing with your money. But other than that, uh, it's going to be good. Other than the fact that we can throttle your money and keep you from being able to spend it, you know, if you eat too much meat or if you do something crazy, like you want to fill your gas tank up three times a week. Uh, but beyond that, guys, I'm telling you, it's going to be just great. All the while, Georgieva advocated for the benefits of the CBDC emphasizing its potential to improve access to banking and foster financial inclusion. That is a word salad that she put two words in there, though, that mean a lot to the Pavlovian response that's been programmed into a lot of people in the Western world. OK, and remember, the Western world is the one most likely to rise up against this people in the developing world. They have a totally different thing going on with their government and they're less likely to be able to push back. But when you slide in words like inclusiveness, OK, and uh, the potential to uh, bring in benefits OK, to marginalized demographics. I mean, come on. You know, these people went through 400 years of slavery. We want to include them. Right. All the while, they don't have any intention of doing anything of the sort. This thing will be used, okay, let's just be flat out honest. When it comes to certain demographics, it will be used to harm them. As we've seen, that we've got a, a great amount of disparity developing in this country by way of, you know, racial politics. That's going to go into hyperdrive when we see something like this. Kodak Black, he's a rapper, okay? And he recently, a few years ago, uh, spent three years in prison for the exact same crime that Hunter Biden was uh, convicted of, okay? He just pled and he's been convicted of a misdemeanor. He won't see one day in jail because like some tin pot dictatorship, he's the son of the king, all right? And this kind of thing, you can juxtapose it onto how these CBDCs will be conducted in the lives of us, the common people. Oh, it's going to be great for uh, cross-border transactions. Additionally, she highlighted its ability to reduce cost and enhance the speed and efficiency of cross-border transactions, drawing attention to the current transfer, which stand at about 6.3%, resulting in a staggering loss of $45 billion for intermediaries, like they care. That's 6.3% will be pumped into taxation uh, and the governments of the world a few years down the road uh, will be taxing people at greater than 6.3%. So all that savings is going to evaporate. All right. This is about control. So you've got the IMF out there pushing for that. Uh, she also, on her visit to Morocco, used it as an opportunity to gather information on the preparations for an upcoming annual meeting of the IMF and the World Bank. Scheduled in October, this event will provide a platform for global leaders to discuss pressing economic matters and chart a course for a sustainable and inclusive future. Again, with the Pavlovian, you know, kind of direction there, sustainable, inclusive, okay? And in the minds of many Americans who have been hypnotized by this Svengali like financial uh, language, you know, that, that that's enough to make a sizable portion of America, the ones that know about a CBDC, go along with it. Okay. They don't see 
what we're about to get to with the uh, Bank of International Settlements and what they're talking about. This appears to be the top-down push to transform the fiat system into the CBDC uh, system, okay? A system where they will implement and have full control over your money. Let me give you an example, okay? We did a profile a while back on a woman by the name of Saul Amrova. And she uh, actually was up for the top spot, one of the top spots in the treasury. She was going to be what's called the uh, comptroller of the currency. Joe Biden had nominated her to be the comptroller of the currency. Okay. And she graduated on a Lenin scholarship from the Russian, or I'm sorry, the Soviet School of Economics. That's what she's coming out of, right? And then she's nominated for a position here, uh, you know, with authority over our financial system. She would have been working in the Treasury Department, subordinate to Janet Yellen, but still in a very uh, influential position. And what she said, she's on record as saying, and we got plenty of videos where we profiled it. She's on record as actually saying, uh, here's one thing we could do. We could abolish the banks. And some might argue we're in the process of doing that. That we're going to end up with J.P. Morgan, um, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citibank, and New York Mellon. Okay. We could abolish the banks, she said. And all of the money would be the property of the Fed. Now, they still need the banks around because you're certainly not going to the Fed to get your money, right? So they would still need some you know, customer facing or citizen facing uh, organizations for you to interact with. Then she said, let's say we have an inflationary environment. Now, what we do, uh, <laughs> I'm going to put that up, Liberty Garden, hold on. Uh, right now, what we do is uh, we, we need to manipulate interest rates, okay, in order to control inflation. That's one of our monetary tools. However, if we establish the CBDC, we could just throttle the ability of Americans to spend money. And what does throttle mean? It's a telecom term for slowing down traffic. So she said, hey, we'll just prevent you from spending your money. That basically is the, the kind of uh, result we want to see from higher interest rates anyway. That would also allow these companies not to have to incur an additional interest cost. They wouldn't have to raise interest rates, but it would fall on you. And this is a person that came within a hair's breadth of becoming the comptroller of the currency. So that basically telegraphs what this administration and what this government, the, this telegraphs the direction in which they're going and the, the power of a fully implemented CBDC. Let me put this comment up. Liberty Garden says, there are four people watching. I bet it's Google, <laughs> Klaus Schwab, Powell, and me. Right, right. And uh, Google is saying, uh, they're asking Klaus, take this channel down. Should we do it now mid-live stream? And Powell said, no, nah, hold on, uh, because that would seem too obvious. Let's just, uh, he's he's going to go walk up. He's got a quarter mile driveway. He's going to take a walk up there to get his mail later on today. We'll just deal with him then. And uh, so guys, if you don't see me again, you know what happened. They got me. Uh, let's see. Ziggy Piggy says, hey, soldiers of finance, Marion Norton and Liberty Garden. Hey, Ziggy Piggy, how you doing? All right. And Marion's saying she never gets the notices uh, for this. Uh, check the community page too periodically, guys, uh, so that you can know when this is uh, these live streams are going to come out. Because, you know, I'm talking about... There's a reason this channel is, uh, if I switched and started doing uh, cat tricks, I have a very energetic energetic cat we just uh, adopted a few months ago, back in December. He was a kitten, and he's gotten more energetic since he was a kitten. If I started videotaping what he does around the house, um, this channel would be at a million views by the end of next week. But because we're talking about things, and look, we're talking about the CBDC, 72% of people in that survey we talked about earlier, 72% of Americans surveyed don't even know what it is, all right? So it's no reason that uh, a live stream like this is 
not commanding a lot more views. I would encourage you guys, though, to share this on your platforms. Also, if you scroll up to the top, you will see that we have uh, diversified. They always say diversity is our strength. So we have diversified. We're on Twitter now and Rumble. OK, it's harder to hit a, mu a moving uh, target. Right. All right. Let's go over here to the Bank of International Settlements. See what they're talking about now. Who are they? The Bank of International Settlements can be thought of as a central bank of central banks. That's who they are. And they have just uh, basically implemented, um, and they implemented it a while ago. What they are doing at this point is basically fleshing out uh, how they're going to proceed with the implementation of a global central bank digital currency. All right. Now, that's scary on a few levels, uh, biblically, okay, that's spoken about. Uh, it's also spoken about with regard to uh, some of the text that, you know, was alluded to in, um, in uh, Orwell's writings, okay? Um, what do they want to do here? Well, they're writing, and I, this is why I, I say this is not conspiracy, because they're writing about this openly. It's on their website. You can go to the Bank for International Settlements website. This is front and center. Pull it down and read it for yourself. Now, what are the highlights of this? All right, let's start with tokenism. Uh, to tokenization, rather, of money and assets has great potential. But initiatives to date have taken place in silos without access to central bank money and the foundation of trust it provides. What are they saying there? Well, they're they're making a comment on cryptocurrency. They're saying, yeah, it's a good idea, okay? But what it lacks is access to the central banks. What they mean by that is the central banks don't control it, okay? That's what they mean by that. Uh, and, you know, they go further to say, we're trusted, right? The central banks... When you think of trust, I know the your mind is the central bank, right? Um, let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, Liberty Garden, you're right. Uh, it says if you start doing videos about the wonders of ESG and AI, uh, you'll get to the top. You, you're absolutely right. So that's the one thing they're talking. They come straight off. That's their first bullet point in that gray area. Tokenization of money and assets has great potential but they intend to co-op that while at the same time crushing adoption of private crypto. Bullet point number two. And again, I cannot stress to you enough, this is written down in black and white on a public internet uh, site for the world, uh, for the uh, Bank of International Settlements, okay? Bullet number two, a new type of financial market infrastructure a unified ledger. What is a unified ledger? That just is code for a global ledger. All right. United States. No, you're not going to have your own French. You're not going to. No, China. We're going to work to put this all together. Remember, the People's Bank of China, the Fed here uh, in America, the um, Bank of uh, England. Okay. Their signatories, all signatories to the Bank of International Settlements. I go on. Uh, so a unified ledger it could capture the full benefits of tokenization by combining central bank money, tokenized deposits, and tokenized assets on a programmable platform. What does that mean? It goes back to what I was saying earlier. A programmable platform means that you would not be in control of your money because depending on what they want to do with monetary policy, okay, manipulating how much money is out there in the system, they could throttle you at any given time. That's one way. A more nefarious aspect of this, which I assure you will be an eventuality at some point, is the coupling of social and uh, political behavior with access to your funds. Now, mind you, you've gone out here, expressed your creativity or uh, traded your labor for 
value, all right? But essentially, you'll be a slave because you will not have the sole purview over how this money is spent or even when it's spent or if it's spent under that second bullet point. They are very explicit. Programmability. This is not Tyrone Key saying this. This is the Bank of International Settlements saying it. Okay, Marion says they have to know this will fail on a global level, especially looking at where BRICS is going. What's up with the other, uh, with this other than to collapse the system? And that may be so. There are a lot of people out there that are like, listen, the United States is intentional in its drive to uh, take the dollar out of sole reserve currency status. They know what they're doing. This is intentional. It could be driving toward this point. Now, the thing is, though, I mean, will it fail? Because it's live stream and uh, we're talking about it. But what makes me less optimistic about the ultimate failure and people waking up before it's too late is, again, that's 72 percent. This live stream and the participants on it now bear that out. There is. There's not going to be a groundswell of interest in this until I believe pessimistically uh, someone goes to use their CBDC and um, they're not able to get money. OK. And, you know, if we take it to the it's it's dystopian conclusion. Well, you're putting the card in the gas pump. You're like, what's going on? I know I got money. And you get a little message that says you have exceeded your quota for whatever time period. Come on, guys, we got a planet to save here. Okay, take your butt back home and, turn, uh, and forget that family vacation for now. All right, so that is unfortunately what I think is going to happen and why I would like you guys to share this on your platforms because or just start talking to friends about it. All right, educate them. Third bullet point. As well as improving existing processes through the seamless integration of transactions, a unified ledger could harness programmability, again, okay, to enable arrangements that are currently not practicable, thereby expanding the universe of possible economic outcomes. Now, that one right there, you just read between the lines, people. They're saying, look, if we make this thing programmable, there's really no telling how much we can control society. OK, we're not even going to try to get into elaborating on it at this bullet point. They do further in the report, but that's pretty explicit to me. And this is a non-governmental organization that the United States is a signatory to. OK, every Western country is we get viewers from Canada. Canada, you're in there. We get viewers from the UK. You're in there. We get viewers from India. You're in there. And every time I post anything about uh, Xi, Xin, uh, Xi Jinping, oh, we, we got viewers from China too, because uh, they comment when I post something about uh, the nation of China. Last bullet point, multiple ledgers, each with a specific use case might coexist, interlinked by application programming interfaces to ensure interoperability as well as promote financial inclusion and a level playing field. How can you have a level playing field when we're talking about money? All right. Some people have more money than others. Some people, you know, have bring a different skill set to the table. Hey, look, I you got these athletes out here. They got more money than I have. And that's fine. OK, they're exploiting their talents. But you're talking about a level playing field. How are you le leveling the playing field? Unless what they mean by that is like a snide little, uh, <laughs> snide little way of saying equal misery, which is usually what these socialistic kind of uh, things mean. All right. Now I don't know if I covered this. I don't think I did. So look, I will um, put this in the community page. I'll put the link to this document in the community page, and you can go. And you can check it out uh, for yourself uh, and read it. I would definitely encourage you doing just that. Now, we've got something here in America that's about to kick off. And uh, it, 
is called Fed Now. In fact, uh, it'll be here within seven days. July 1st, seven or eight days, is when the Fed Now system goes into you might what the hell is Fed Now? Fed Now is a service developed by the Federal Reserve for depository institutions in the United States. It will individuals, you and me, and businesses to send and receive instant payments. Banks will be able to build products on top of the FedNow platform. FedNow, think of it as the rail system to a CBDC. Okay, this is the kind of foundation you need technically in order to establish a CBDC. We're dealing with the United States of America. And, you know, even though we've gone left on a lot of things, we still are pretty adept at uh, technological implementation. Now, Here's another thing about the CBDC that you're seeing in China. It's going to make the establishment of a social credit score that much easier. And if you think that the United States would not do that, then I ask you to look back at, at what was this, like three years ago, when the uh, president of the United States two or three years ago told you that you didn't deserve to have a job unless you took a certain medication, all right, and that he supported People being fired, separated from their income, and changing the trajectory of their entire lives and the lives of their family unless you did what he said do. So if you think that we're not going to face these bureaucrats with a temptation to um, actually use a CBDC in that fashion as a social credit cudgel, got a bridge to sell you. We're going to do just that. We're going to see just that. Now, look, guys, we need to talk about um, how we get around this, okay? And I'm going to tell you, look, I don't give investment advice on the channel. You all know that. But I am going to tell you what I'm doing, all right? Uh, they want everything on this ledger that we talked about. They want everything on the ledger, everything you own on the uh, ledger. Ziggy Piggy. Not a single candidate for 2024 has even mentioned the digit dollar. Right, right. And I've been looking for that. Good point. Good point. All right, so let's say me and Ziggy Piggy, he's got a car to sell. Let's say he's got one of those old classic sobs, nice cars. And he and I say, oh, you know, okay, let's make a deal. I, I buy the sob, okay? Uh, and we come to a price and cool. Well, under the CBDC system, that would be, that transaction would be on the ledger. I just couldn't say, here you go, and not with dollars, not with this digital dollar or CBDC. I couldn't do that because that's going to be on the ledger. So that's a way of basically saying that we kind of, we, we, the government, we kind of own everything. We, the Fed, we kind of own it all, you know, and we see it all. All right. So. How do you get around that? Let's see. Hold on. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Thank you, Marion. So uh, Marion says that she has um, witnessed Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who is under fire like you wouldn't believe, mention the CBDC saying that if it were instituted, we are done. He's absolutely right. Um, Liberty Garden. There's too much money that goes under the table for Congress to vote for a ledger. That's a great point, unless they reserve themselves an alternate form of payment for their bribes. You ain't lying, because did you see this report that came out here? And we will get back to, you know, ways to circumvent this. Uh, did you see this Pentagon audit that they did? They say, miraculously, we found six billion dollars. And what do you think they did with it? Do you think they said, this is great because now we got a lot of homeless veterans out there and we are the Pentagon, uh, you know, after all. So what we're going to do, we found this $6 billion, we're going to pump it into these programs and help the people who made the Defense Department what it is, who went out there and protected America. If you think they did that, you are wrong. They didn't do that. If you believe that they said, oh, this is $6 billion more we can give to Ukraine. If you thought that, you are exactly right. That's what they did. They said they found $6 billion and they're just going to give it to Ukraine. Now, this whole thing 
Do you really believe that they could get an accurate accounting of every dollar that has been given to these people? Every form of value from the armored vehicles to the weapons? And do you think that someone here in the United States is now also making a lot of money with that or several somebodies? So you're right, Liberty Garden. You would need to see that on that ledger unless way down in the 2,451st page of the legislation, they somehow exempt themselves. OK. And Congress, I mean, hey, look, they can go into a meeting right now, today, and they can learn about something that's going to occur and they can act on that. Whereas you or I, some guy, Goldman Sachs, just got uh, convicted of uh, insider trading. OK, we all know Martha Stewart. She went down for that. OK, so rules for thee, not for me is what we have. Uh, yeah, 6.2 billion. That's right, uh, Ziggy Piggy. Um, Marion says, was it 60 or 600 million went to Z Zelensky? <laughs> Probably the higher amount. Uh, that sort of accounting. Yep. And Ziggy Piggy says, yep, definitely several somebody. So how do we work around this, guys? All right. We're not going to be able to just, just quite frankly, you're not going to be able to totally exempt yourself. But from my, from my standpoint, that it is important to separate some assets from the system. Now, how do you do that? Well, for starters, land that you own, okay? And I think you got about 10 years to make these kind of changes happen. Precious metals and uh, your labor or your ingenuity focused on a local level in terms of bartering, all right? Uh, I think those three things keep you out of being fully exposed to the system to the point where you can care for Maslow's hierarchy, shelter, you know, food, think the, the important things in life, right? And again, I stress, and I've been doing this on this channel for uh, quite some time, is uh, the thing I've been doing is stressing that we need to totally revamp our definition of wealth. Okay, wealth, in my estimation, is independence, all right? Um, not necessarily baubles or the affectations of wealth that have been defined as jewelry, cars, clothes, uh, you know, big houses, Fine. If you got the money to do that, great. Understand where we're going with that. Um, also, when they talk about inclusiveness, understand that they're talking about who gets money and who doesn't. All right. Now, as a black conservative, how much deference do you think I'll be given? If you want to uh, get some insight on the answer to that question, um, also ask yourself, you know, what are we seeing in the world today? We're seeing an attack by large corporations, governments, and non-governmental organizations on certain ideologies, right? And so we see the of this if they're able to uh, attach some sort of penalty to our money. And they don't hesitate to do it now. When people express the wrong view, what do they do? They come out and they try to separate you from your income. They attack you by... Um, to exposing you. There's a term for it though, doxing. Okay. And um, that makes it difficult for you to maintain the value of your property. Maybe you got to get out of there. You know, several people have had to do that. So uh, that's what's going on out there, guys. I um, encourage you again to share this content uh, because it's vital. We got to take that 72% of Americans who don't even know what the heck a CBDC is, and we got to reduce that number. Otherwise, because if we can reduce that number, then we get to Marion's point about being able to uh, push back on this. All right. But if only, you know, a quarter of the percentage of the population knows what it is, and of that percentage, some people are for it then, you know, okay. All right, guys, check out the other platforms that we have. We are on Twitter. So it's the finance, I believe it's SOF 
uh, the real SOF one number one. We're on Rumble, okay. Um, we're out there also on um, Patreon as well. Check us out on all of those platforms so that you won't have to worry about us disappearing, okay. Uh, Marion says, I'm hoping there's a match similar to Vietnam. We shall see. I think people are getting fed up, but the, the, I think the CBDC is is the Leviathan's ultimate plan. If they can get over that hump and establish that, then it's too late. Gotcha. Then uh, what government program do you know that they say, all right, we're, we're done with that. We're not going to do that anymore. Our Department of Education, mind you, we went to the moon before the Department of Education was established. Okay. It's obviously not working if you look at our standing in terms of global education. It has fallen steadily. All right. Part of the reason why is because we're teaching a perverted biology. Or you can be a cat if you want. Um, that's part of it. Uh, and so why do we need the Department of Education, right? But we're never going to backtrack on these what are essentially job creation programs, government job creation programs, because they create a lot of people who don't want to see smaller government. They want to see larger government. And the more of those people you can bring in to the system, the better for the Leviathan. OK. Uh, hey, Steve, how you doing? Thank you for joining us, Steve. Uh, Steve's a good friend of mine. And if you're thinking, I'm going to tell you something about Steve Wynn. This guy, he went out and met with the Steve Wynn that you know from Las Vegas. And he said, listen. That Steve Wynn, he actually met that guy at a truck stop. He was down on his luck. And my Steve Wynn said, I'm going to make you a deal. If you allow me to hide my vast wealth behind your name, I'll make you a rich man. And so that's exactly what happened. Steve, I know you're a multi-billionaire and I know you've hidden it from me for years, but I love you anyway. All right. Uh, Marion says, I, I need to come up with some BS and get a grant. Hey, the guy with the submarine, okay? Um, and saying that uh, scientific stuff, like uh, he said, we're going to go down to the Titanic and we're going to do science. And I'm like, what science is down there at the Titanic? And he said, we're, what we're doing is we're tracking the, <laughs> we're tracking the uh, change. OK, the Titanic is changing over time. Of course it is. It's sitting at the bottom of the ocean. It's deteriorating. We don't need a scientific expedition to tell us that. All right. What are you talking? But this is the way you get grant money. I want to go down to the bottom of the ocean and figure out the deterioration rate of the Titanic. And this can tell us valuable information in case any more ships go to the bottom of the ocean. We can. We can tell how fast they're going to decay. And that will help us with climate change. All you got to do is put climate change in it. And once they see that word, boom, they write you a check. All right. Uh, Liberty Garden. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, unfortunately, anything that gets your government money also earns you time in hell. Those are the only causes they support. It seems like it. It definitely seems like it. Okay. Um, let's see. So, yeah, you guys get together and figure out um, a grant program, right? All right, guys. So, look, I want you to check out, if go back in the stack, and I'll um, link to it on the uh, community page also. Take a look at that documentary we did about um, BlackRock. I think that's the one that actually uh, sank the channel. They saw that and they, boom, torpedoed it. Um, it's, a, it's a documentary, though, that tells you how this whole ESG plays in to what you're seeing with the woke culture. We're going to drop a video later on today, as a matter of fact, that will tell you Bud Light, a whole Anheuser-Busch, this thing will not relent. They are still feeling the financial effects of their decision, okay, to kind of come away from the um, traditional uh, constituency that they had. This thing, and also remember, Modelo is now the top selling beer in America, and it has knocked Bud off of 
the shelf, so to speak. Uh, Bud had been either Bud or Bud Light. Those two were the reigning champ, number one beer in America for decades. Here comes this controversy. People switch to Modelo. Now, let me tell you this real quick. Modelo in America is owned not by Anheuser-Busch. You go on the Anheuser-Busch site and you will see Modelo. They can only sell Modelo outside the U.S. Modelo in the U.S. is owned by Constellation Brands. The reason for that is because when Anheuser-Busch wanted to buy some American beverage properties, the Federal Trade Commission made them divest of the um, the other the other properties. Okay, so all of the money that is made via the sale of Modelo in America goes to Constellation Brands. Okay. So a lot of people are a little confused about it, and rightfully so, right? I was in, in the beginning. Um, so there you go. Uh, Liberty Garden has a comment here. I was uh, I was just forced to do my yearly sexual harassment training at work, and it was full of the ESG garbage, absolutely. Hey, psh, Liberty Garden, my wife and I had to sit down, and we had to say to ourselves, damn, we're unemployable. We've had our businesses now for 20 years, and um, we just hear these horror stories where, damn, I, I just can't come to work anymore and do my damn job, all right, without being beat over the head with all of this ESG, DEI garbage, all right? I, I got an English major and an English degree, and I don't understand the pronoun thing, okay? What are you talking about? I just, you look like a woman. I called you ma'am. What, what's the big deal? You look like a man. Get a better surgery, uh, a better surgeon. I don't know. Um, so yeah, guys, thanks for joining the stream. Keep it up on the channel with the thumbs up. I really, really appreciate all of you and the support that you've given the channel. Talk to your folks, uh, friends and family about the CBDC. Educate people. Be soldiers of finance and go out there and uh, carry the message, guys. All right. I hope you have a great afternoon. Start to your weekend. All right, guys. I will talk to you soon.